Good morning folks, interesting climate article here. It includes the obligatory anthropogenic warming bit but also begins to suggest some fascinating natural mechanisms for the weather extremes we're seeing across the globe. Like flooding. Almost 200,000 people in Mozambique are displaced from their homes. It's a staggering number. There's a mass fish die off in the Cuyahoga River in Cleveland, Ohio. Snow forced a team of geologists off the volcano as they were checking for signs of activity after quakes rumbled beneath it. And Slovenia's lone nuke plant had a shutdown yesterday due to a steam engine issue. They now say there's no danger. Tropical Cyclone Rusty, in the process of making landfall pretty much right on top of Port Headland. Between there and South Headland, about 25,000 residents are directly in the path of this thing. Ride it out, guys. It is worth mentioning that Southeast Queensland, no stranger to flooding right now either. Central Europe, stuck underneath that high pressure, churning, light chance of thunderstorms in the Mediterranean, but also has temperatures generally warmer than average. Cold is about to creep back in from the north. When I heard that residents in parts of Oklahoma were being told to stay inside, I hopped on the wind map to find the storm in full swing. Basically covers a third of the United States. For those new here in the northern hemisphere, these big blue low pressure cells spin the wind counterclockwise into the center. Highs push out clockwise, and this is reversed in the southern hemisphere. But the clouds don't necessarily follow the wind, they follow the convergence of air mass. So despite how different this cloud movement appears, you should be able to connect the two. And this is how you get hail, lightning, and tornadoes in the Gulf states out of the same winter storm pounding the north. Here's the watch zone tonight. As we check Canadian satellite images and check the global storm watch zones, please remember to check your local forecast. This is certainly not a substitute for having your eyes open. For those who didn't catch it yesterday, we got dinged with the plasma eruption from the sun. Pretty much lasted all day as these things often do. There was confusion about the pressure on the magnetosphere, but it was just the filament, and I caught you guys around 10 o'clock UTC yesterday, so I didn't really even get to show you the real impact, which is waning now. Having a look at the sunspots, top left, we can now see more than one umbra, but still mostly negative polarity. Bottom left, we saw the active region blossoming two nights ago, but it has faded while the central active region to the top right takes that top spot today with a beta gamma class and it's worth monitoring. Our massive filament popped, reappeared, and is now headed for the limb. If it releases just past, the Earth footprint could be surged by an eruption. We saw another one turning in, but she might not last very long. Kind of a spaz. Soho Lasco C3 shows a bright light entering from the right. This is Venus, soon to be joined by Mercury coming in from the left and Mars a week later. Full moon was last night and the planets really began lining up tomorrow. The quake watch has officially been called through early March, but something to note, those who are well understanding the coronal hole connection can add a piece of the puzzle today as this central umbral field returns with strength, holds form, it's beginning to encroach the eastern limb and beginning to crowd the coronal holes. We see the field lines are actually beginning to block the leading edge from opening in Earth's direction. But this cannot last long as the field is unstable and the holes are ever turning toward us just a matter of time, maybe an extra day or so. Meanwhile, all we got so far is some moderate upticks in some of the usual suspect locations. Eyes open, no fear at 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.